Hi folks, uh, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to show you Eucalyptus racemosa, or commonly known as the narrow leaf scribbly gum. Um, it got its common name because in its native habitat, well, as you can see, it's a smooth bark species, but in its native habitat, there's this kind of moth that will lay its eggs underneath the bark. So when the bark sheds, after every year, the the scribbles um, coming from the larvae borrowing from underneath the bark will show, uh, giving them this distinctive um, scribbles on the bark. Um, that's why it's called scribbly gum. But of course, here, oh, by the way, I'm right now in um, UC Santa Cruz Arboretum. Um, I don't think they have the moth here, so the bark is just um, you know without the scribbles. But it's such a gorgeous bark. Look at it. So here's the one here, and there's the one over there, um, and the one in the back as well. Um, that one is not a racemosa. Um, so racemosa is in this subgroup Monocalyptus, which can be um, distinguished by this lack of a perculum scar on its buds. It's not that obvious on camera, but yeah, they don't have a perculum scars in general. And also something else is that, um, I don't know if you can see, but the veins in the leaves are much, much um, not as dense as the other big group, the Symphiomartus, which is, you know, includes the more, some of the important timber species like Eucalyptus globulus, um, Seligna, on uh, grandis, etc. Um, so, monocalyptus um, is this big group that has different, you know, subgroup series as well. And racemosa belongs to this um, this blue leaf ash group, um, I think. And that's because um, here I got really lucky. There is a a young seedling. Um, probably dropping like uh, from the seed over overhead uh, you can see the juvenile leaf here are not as they're bluish green they're not like green green like their adult leaf um, that's why they're called this blue leafed ash group and together with um, another subspecies within eucalyptus racemosa sometimes it's recognized its own species and together with um, there's another one, I think, called um, Kima. I saw a tag there somewhere. Let me see. I forgot its name. I think it's referring to the, like, you know, Hema is referring to the color red on the disc, which is on its fruit. Um, Hema stoma, I think? Uh, let me check. Uh, by the way, here is another Rasmosa. Although, they put the name, um, yeah, Hemastoma here, but really it's a racemosa because Hemastoma, um, they have different size of, um, of, uh, of fruits. Yeah, um, so there you have it, Eucalyptus racemosa, a really, really beautiful species, and it's monocalyptus, so add some diversity. Um, to the group as well um, Yeah, and one theory is that some of the monocalyptus doesn't grow quite as fast as Symphomertus Especially early on in their life um, and the other theory is that because they're more reliant on um, the The mycorrhizal in the soil to form symbiosis relationship But once they form their relationship establish their roots um, they catch on um, I saw a paper saying like after six months they don't really see significant difference but before that the Symphomortis group is growing so much faster um, but yeah let me not bore you with all the details um, just wanted to include say this is a beautiful species Eucalyptus racemosa um, it's a small-ish size tree I think it's 220 something 25 meters um, it's not that big um, yeah beautiful tree See you next time.